Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I'm going to be going over a couple of the new printers that FlashForge is showing off at Rapid TCT in Detroit this week. And we finally are able to know what was under that mysterious cloth in their teaser image for Rapid TCT. I had a few people saying that it could be the 85X Pro. Well, now we know that ain't it but I'm gonna show you exactly what it is. Now, as I record this, it is April 7th, the day before. So flash forward sent over this information in advance. So I knew about it when I woke up this morning. So right now I don't know the prices for these things, but don't be surprised if I interject with another clip from April 8th before I publish this to tell you what the prices and availability are going to be. But until then, let's take a look at what was underneath that mysterious cloth. It is not the 85X, instead it is this the guider four all right so the guider four is what was underneath that cloth and this is what it looks like and i'm going to be looking at this marketing material that flash forward sent along to me and as you can see it does utilize the ifs with the four colors and the tagline is big ideas go colorful because it's got a build volume that is nice and big, one that we were really, really wanting to see. It is 300 by 300 by 300 millimeters. So that is a nice big size. And in addition to that, they've also sped up the printer. The acceleration is now 30,000 millimeters per second squared. That's up from the previous generation's 20,000 millimeters per second squared. And they're also promoting this TPU 64D uh, printing capability. Now, that is different than what they originally showed for the 85X when they were touting 95A TPU printing. 64D is still TPU, but it's not as flexible. It's not as squishy as 95A. It's a little, it's actually more stiffer than 95A, making it easier to print while still being able to maintain those somewhat of those same qualities that TPU has, just not as TPU-y, you know what I mean? So they've backed away from the 95A and now they're saying 64D TPU printing. It also says that uh, it maintains peak speed 600 millimeters per second printing at all times, ensuring the entire process stays ahead. We will see what that is like. And I do a little comparison here um, of what the speeds would be compared to a common high speed 3D printer. So basically they're saying for um, a piece like this that would take 25 hours to print on some other printer, they're saying that it's gonna take 17 hours and 30 minutes on the uh, Guider 4. So here are the two different sets of nozzles. You got regular nozzles here, and then you have some high flow nozzles. They go up to 320 degrees Celsius, and they are also hardened steel. So if you want to print uh, some filaments that are more abrasive, then you would just stick with the regular nozzles in the 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 millimeter configurations. You see it down here, lets you print PLA, PTG, ABS, TPU, and fiber composites. The 0 0.25, bit too small for that and get clogged easily. So of course they're just saying that you can't print abrasive filaments with a 0 0.25, or you can move over to the high flow nozzles that have sizes of 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8. I thought it was pretty interesting how the regular nozzles don't have a 0 0.8 millimeter option at least not here on this chart but the high flow nozzles do and then they also just kind of sort of vaguely tell you what the print speed and what the print quality is going to be like of course the best print quality is with the smaller nozzles it's going to take you longer to print and then the higher you go to 0 0.8 then the quality goes down but you know you'll get stuff done a bit faster so these high flow nozzles are not to be used with the um abrasive filament but it is another option for you so here's some of the TPU stuff down here. And like I said earlier, it's the 64D, not the 95A. Although I've shown um, plenty of occasions that the 85X can handle 95A TPU. And as you see here, they do recommend 64D to 75D. 
TPU, but no mention of the 95A. And this is just more information about the IFS and the fact that if you're using the same color and the same type of filament, then it can just automatically resume to the next roll if you if you run out. Um, it's got some LiDAR detection as well for the guider for vibration compensation and the app that you can use. And now we're back to these nozzles that they say are one third the price of the Adventure 5M nozzles. And we're still waiting for the release, the official release of these nozzles, like on the Flash Forward store for the 85X. They're not there yet. The only ones that I've seen that claim to be from Flash Forward were on AliExpress, and those were still costing like $35, the same price as the Adventure 5M nozzle. So we need to get it in the official store and then also on Amazon so we can see like, what is it actually going to be? And then some more kind of just basic things here. We all know that it's auto leveling, your power loss recovery, and the way that you swap the nozzles are different. And I did a video showing how you swap to these new size nozzles. And then here's just the regular spec sheet. So uh, we got the bed temperature that can go up to 130 degrees Celsius. As I said earlier, the extruder temperature can go up to 320 degrees Celsius. In regards to that LiDAR, it's optional. It doesn't just come with it. So as it says up here, um, the LiDAR module is optional for specialized needs. And then down here, when it talks about LiDAR, if you want to do flow rate calibration and first layer inspection, then the LiDAR would be required for that. So that's just something uh, that you should know about, including the chamber lighting. It doesn't come with that. So that's also going to be optional, but it does still have an Ethernet port. I know that that that's important to some people. And then eight gigabytes of internal storage and dual band Wi-Fi. So that is the Guider 4. They also share some information about the other version of this, which is the Guider 4 Pro. So this is the Guider 4 Pro, and we already saw this late last year when it was announced. But now we have more information about it. It's mostly the same compared to the Guider 4, but it does have some uh, additions and some improvements. For example, it has a heated chamber that can get up to 65 degrees Celsius. So that's going to be good for some engineering materials that require that kind of heat. But it still maintains the same uh, speeds as far as your printing speeds and acceleration and the flow rate that's still the same and then this one also has lidar detection and that is built in a little module right there you can see where my mouse is I believe that's where the lidar detection is going to come into play but unlike the guider 4 or the 85x the ifs does not come with this as standard but it's optional so you can add the ifs to it but it does not come with the ifs and down here in the color mastery section multicolor mastery section you see where it says there with optional ifs module so you don't have to go down that route if you don't want to and um, they're looking at this one as being the um, the ideal printer for uh, industrial applications because of that heated chamber and because of that lidar so that you can print with more exotic materials so of course us regular joes and jane consumers can definitely use this but this would be the better option if that's the type of uh of thing that you're trying to do especially if you're more business oriented but everything else is pretty much the same and it still has the ethernet it still has the internal storage dual band wi-fi but just with the active heated chamber with the lidar built in and it has the optional ifs and it is of course it's fully enclosed they show the door on it you see a little door handle right there so yeah, um, not a lot different about the Guider 4 Pro, just makes it a more um, enticing option for those who are definitely going to be printing with more uh, exotic filaments. Hello, future Jeremy here. So it is now April 8th and Rapid TCT is underway and still don't know what the release date or the prices are going to be on these new guider 4 printers but the thing is when i woke up this morning i saw that the internet is kind of in a little bit of an uproar because bamboo lab has increased the prices for their printers and of course that is going to be the result of those tariffs kicking in which apparently have gotten even worse or will get worse by april 9th and even on flash forge's website they have a little banner there that talks about locking in pre-tariff 
chair of prices. So it's kind of like, get your stuff now before the price goes up. So because of that, I, I don't even know if we can reasonably expect some solid prices for these printers. And um, I'm not gonna wait anymore. I'm gonna put this video out. But if we do get some actual pricing and some release dates, you can find that information down in the description of this video. And I'll also put up a community post when any of that information becomes available so that you can find out about it at that time for the Guider 4 and the Guider 4 Pro. We are in a kind of weird period right now coming off of what's going on with the 85x and the fact that it's not available to purchase right now it was in the beginning but it's not anymore and we don't know when it's going to come back um as i record this flash force hasn't said when it's going to become available again but then you have these two newer printers that are now being you know dangled in front of us and you can make a purchase for these. So I would understand why someone would be hesitant to purchase um, one of these FlashForge printers right now because they don't want the same thing to happen with these printers as what's happening right now with the 85X. However, at the same time, at least for us here in the United States, Normally, it would be a wait and see approach before spending money in a situation like this. But since we're dealing with this whole tariff situation, you don't really know how much these things are going to be from one week to the next. So while you have the prices set before you, if you hold off, you might end up spending much more when or if tariffs kick in. So it's it's weird, you know, you, you want to kind of play it safe, but at the same time, it's like, well, you know what, since I don't know how much this is actually going to cost, if tariffs kick in, then if it doesn't work out, I'll just return the printer and get my money back. So it, we're rolling the dice here, you know, it's too, it's uncertain. So if you want to just see how things are and make that purchase so you can get in before any potential price increases, then, um, Time is unfortunately not going to be on the consumer side in this case, at least not here in this country. But um, yeah, we will see how this turns out. And if I ever get my hands on either of these two printers, you can be assured that uh, I will continue to provide the coverage for them, just like I've done with the Adventure 5M and the 85X. So that's going to do it for now. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more stuff like this, especially when it comes to these particular printers, be sure to subscribe so that you won't miss any of the new news about them. So until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.